didn't start off like that. They're starting at the end and only showing you the end. You need to normalize lifting weights for everyone. It's a quick fix that like, I'm gonna get the results right away. No one can promise you quick results. You have the best PT in the world. He's not gonna do it for you. For Eunice and Ezra, where's this journey going next? Welcome to the Fit Credibles podcast. This is our first full episode. Numero uno. Numero uno. So just so you get an idea, it's going to be all topics, fitness, health. We'll dive into other things as well. Yeah. But the main thing is we are just trying to educate. We're trying to help people, better them in their journey, be there every step of the way. If they're out on a run, if they're struggling to complete that last set, That's to, to lift that weight, we're there with them. We're going to be giving advice, dispelling all the myths, covering every single topic that will benefit you um, in your fitness journey. And we have no doubts, no doubts. This is a statement, I'm making this, no doubts. <laughs> this is gonna be the leading podcast. Joe Rogan, we're coming for you, innit? This is facts, gonna, facts, facts. This is gonna be the leading podcast in the world. Fit Credibles to the world and back, innit? That's what we always say. So yeah, in this episode, please try to stay throughout from start to finish, because you're gonna get good entertainment. We're gonna answer all your questions, all your worries. We're gonna laugh. We're gonna have a bit of fun as well. We've got some questions for both of us. It's a, you know, if, you, if you're feeling stressed or, you know, whatever it may be, this is gonna help you get through the day and it's gonna help you overall. So, boom, tune in, listen to the whole episode, like I said, start to finish. And yeah, let's get into it, bro. Let's do it, you ready? I'm ready, you? Yeah, I'm ready, I'm good. All right, cool. So we'll start off from the top. So basically myself and Ezra, we both run Fit Credibles, which is the leading fitness brand in the world. If you haven't heard, then you don't know. Yeah, then yeah. now you know in it. But let's just give them a bit of an overview about Fit Credibles, um, about who we are, um, how we started it, how long it's been running for, and like our vision, where we want to get to. So boom, over 100%. to you. Yes. So um, Fit Credibles is, as Eunice said, me and Eunice. Um, we started off, I think I met Eunice in college. And yeah, I was like, what? Seven, eight years ago. Bro, so it was a been, while ago, bro. It's, it's been a while. while. It's been who, was, a... who, who was Ezra before, <laughs> like, I met you? Who were you? Who did you say? Who was you at school? So if I, you know, ask, you know, friends and, and family, or, um, or how did they describe you? Ezra at school was um, always been sporty, been on every sports team. Literally, I even tried playing. That's not what I heard, bro. Tennis. You can <laughs> cover, man. You can. Can ask about me. That's what I, heard, bro. I was like four foot playing basketball. I was doing everything. So I was very yeah. sporty. Mm -hmm. I was into like art, cartoons, mm -hmm. big, big Dragon Ball Z fan. So, yeah, because um, that's what I was going to say. Like, obviously, uh, from what like some people might be able to see, like the clothing, stuff like that, you, yeah. you've had a big hand in designing that. So I can see you've got that creative, artistic. So where, where, do you, where do you think that's come from? Where, where would you say that's come from? <laughs> To be fair, my like my mum, mm -hmm. very creative, mm -hmm. very artsy. So that's where I get the creation from. So yeah, before I met Eunice, I was probably a bit of a nerd. Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z, drawing. For real, what? You don't tell me that. <laughs> you don't tell me this. This is all new. <laughs> yeah, live and direct. So it's an exclusive. It's yeah, an exclusive. A bit of a nerd. Right. But yeah, man. And just into sports. Then we met Eunice at college, football college. Yeah. I was traveling from East London, Eunice is from West London. Yeah, originally I'm from West London. So where yeah. the college was as well. So, and I remember Eunice, first day I saw him, he had like a, I think he had like a Mohican or something. Did I? Oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. Yeah, but yeah, definitely when I saw Eunice, the first thing that stood out about him was that haircut. It was very, very artistic. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely say that. Yeah. And then from football college, was on the same team, so. Mm -hmm. That's where I feel like we built a relationship. From there, we went on to uni. Yeah. And that's where we actually had the idea for Fit Credibles. So I think it was in a I think just getting to this point, stop you. I think yeah. we were on both different things. I feel like, um, I think you more knew like you was going to go to uni, right? Probably. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, you yeah, probably yeah, yeah, knew yeah. more like when it was, obviously when football didn't seem like it was going to happen, you knew you was going to go to uni. Where I yeah. feel like I just. Yeah, sure, sure. Do you get yeah. what I mean? Like, I, just, I, just, I just went. Yeah, I feel like everyone. We all thought we was gonna be pro ballers. It's not over yet. Listen, yeah. I'm might, saying, I'm might make a comeback. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, no, but honestly, on seriousness, yeah, like that's that's literally it. Like, yeah. I think you was more thing where I was like thinking about it. Yeah, but, it's true. Um, but you did make it to uni. I'm proud of you, man. That's what I'm saying. Like I had doubts. I had haters yeah. from day. Like you ain't gonna make it. Yeah, I remember like me and you was in 
in that 24 hour hub. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's uni. Uni's another, that's another That's thing. another story. But going yeah. back to, yeah, so Fit Credibles in uni. I think we both like wanted to do something, but we weren't, at that point, we weren't exactly sure. But I think we both kind of, you know, our background's fitness and, you know, living a healthy lifestyle and being fit. I think that's something yeah. that we did maintain throughout. Like we, we weren't ever, even in uni, like, we were still like, even through like all the kind of hard times of dissertations, handings yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that, we didn't really, we were always going to gym. Always, yeah, we was never always, stopped, yeah. We was always like trying to eat healthy. We weren't eating anything mad like that. So no, yeah, true. We, always, we didn't really go out much. We weren't like drinking and no, getting, true, yeah. getting pissed stuff. So yeah, we was always following that. Yeah, following that regime. And I feel like it might sound cliche, but fitness did always choose us because it's true, it's we true. always did it. And regardless of, even if we didn't know what we was going to do, we always knew we wasn't going to work for anyone else. Yeah, yeah, I knew that from early. So I, I feel from like, early, from, from early. 100%. So I feel like Fit Credibles has given us that platform to create our own world. Exactly. And exactly. just be free to create, to impact people's lives. Mm -hmm. And just to give a bit of us to the world. Yeah, you know, To give it a bit, of, a bit more context as well. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously you worked in various retail he knows his colors. Oh, no. no, but honestly, you worked in various like <laughs> retail stores. I got into re like got retail. One of the questions we'll go over is like the first, first job, job that we had. Yeah. So obviously I got into it a bit later, but yeah. I think um obviously you've got to start somewhere, but we always had visions of getting you know, out you know, man. of getting out and better. And being in that kind of environment and working on the robust and you know, working in sometimes pressured environments because yeah, of yeah, some sure, of the sure, locations sure. that we worked at, we knew like we wanted to. 100%. Do better for ourselves. And I remember vividly one conversation because I was in that, um, I, I, my first job was in um, sweatshop, the running, the running shop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember yeah, sure. like I was, I was out there and I was like, you know, you know, just, just helping the women out, giving great information, helping over gate analysis, which was like the running technique. And yeah, then yeah. she just said something which stuck with me. She's just like, like, like you're better than this. Like, are yeah, you, yeah, I yeah, hope yeah. you don't stay here for like long term and you go better because you can do better than this. And it just stuck with me. And then I was just like, bro, you know what? Like she's, no, it's true. She, she's spot on. Like, I should. I need to pursue and push for better. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That was always kind of the always a dream, always a path. So that's I basically think, what yeah. Fit Credibles is for us. So how it started, we'll get back to that in terms of yeah. uni. Then I can't remember where it was. We went to our first like fitness expo. Um, yeah, man. What we, was it? Fit Pro. Yeah, Fit remember Pro. We, we started fit. going because we started Fit Credibles, but we didn't have. An idea of that, what it was going to be. We just wanted, we just knew we wanted to be fitness orientated. 100%, we wanted yeah. to help people. We was, you know, like hungry. We, we, we was yeah, passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we was fresh out, no beards and that. We just literally, <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to make something work. So yeah, so, like yeah. literally, I remember we, we was like that first initial bit, it was literally just getting out there and just getting an understanding of 100%. the market. So obviously we went to fit, loads of events. Like, went to yeah, loads, but I think Fit, fit Pro, Pro was the one where yeah. we knew like, what was the other There's one we went to that was in Islington in that business centre? The... Beef, not Beef Fit. That's our logo. That's our logo. <laughs> I say Beef Fit, be Bro, incredible. What is it? No, it was, um, was but it? I remember it was like, yeah. It was like sponsored by Reebok or something. But yeah, we went to those two festivals or expos, you'd call yeah. them. And that's where we realised there's a slight gap in the market because at the time, mm -hmm. um, it was mainly like fitness brand and I felt like, a lot of fitness brands, even till this day, is geared towards more bodybuilding yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas us, I feel like we're the medium where we can still achieve the aesthetic gains for our clients, mm -hmm. but we're real people. So we're not pushing on to you 0% body fat, yeah. fat diets and stuff like that. Sure, Everything we sure. do is all sustainable stuff sure. that our mums could do, for example. Sure, sure. So that's where we spotted there's like a gap in the market. But to be fair, being honest, because yeah. that's what it's about. When we first started, it was more clothing, right? We started, oh, yeah. to, we were trying to do the clothing thing because at that point, that's when Gymshark was like kind of- On the rise. Yeah, yeah, yeah on the yeah, rise. Gymshark, and yeah, there was like yeah. a few other things and we thought, you know, we liked, you know, right, like clothing. you said, fashion. Yeah, we liked yeah, clothing, yeah, especially yeah, then sure, like yeah. uni and stuff because we weren't really spending much money on anything else. We were just literally like clothing Clothes. and stuff. So yeah, um, so yeah, we did. Start. We did. We we started that, and I think we done. We was very like we had a vision. We was doing really well, but we just lacked that. Really, 
Let's and bottle, just try and gas it up. Yeah, because it could make it, they could return, didn't it? Nah, we got we gotta be truthful. Yeah, when we, we first truthful. started we the clothing, if you want to talk about myths, the clothing was, was that like, a, was that a fitness myth? That one, that was a real life yeah. myth. The clothing, Do you know, I feel like maybe we did like follow the hype a bit too much. Follow the hype, and we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. That's a, a clear learning direction. curve. Yeah, we didn't have a clear idea. It was a bit sporadic. sporadic yeah, 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 we just had got into like the the industry, which wanted to do something. We wanted to be entrepreneurs and have our own thing, and yeah, 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 you yeah. know. As we'll speak later on, sometimes, um, yeah, slow and steady does win the race. Isn't it? It's not always about going 100%. No, 100%. And at that time, I feel like we was trying to do everything. Yeah. yeah so true, true. what we found is that we had to scale back, do one thing good, get better exactly. at that before we move on. What we were trying to do, we were trying to do clothing, personal training, yeah, nutrition. We were. We were. And then all that did was just... Confuse it. Confuse us. And then the quality... Wasn't the best. It wasn't so. the best, yeah. And that's something we've learned from. I'm just trying to think of it in a timeline because, yeah, we started to do the clothing thing for a while. Yeah, I remember, yeah. do you remember, <laughs> if anyone can, if we can as well, like, I just want to attach it, that first picture we took, the first website we made. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope, I hope I got <laughs> When it, you I'm... had the trading mask. Because I don't know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you told me, you was like, listen, these trading masks, high altitude, you know, they, you know, they, they support your VO2 max and stuff, all of this stuff. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, you know, that's cool. I think it was Anthony Joshua, didn't he? Yeah, do you know what was? When first Obviously, at the time, I'll be honest, it was getting probably uni days, and you know when people are gassing you up, saying, "Yeah, you look like AJ, you look like Anthony Joshua." So oh, thought, okay, that that's what it was. that yeah, was the truth. Yeah, that yeah. like, okay, that's the truth. And now we know. And then we got the training mask, and then partially at the time, I felt like we didn't really want to show our faces at the time. But honest. yeah, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. We didn't, we didn't really want to show we didn't, our faces. Even so. for the first couple of years, we. We were like very um, behind the scenes. Yeah, we're behind the scenes and stuff. Um, we'll get into that later as well. Yeah, to the reasons yeah, yeah, behind yeah. that, but yeah, it was a lot of that. So yeah, but yeah, the, those first images. I remember we got our our boy David to take photos on. Like shout out to David as well. Shout out to David. Um, <laughs> on like it was like my mom's camera was standing in like what was it Brixton Park? <laughs> Matt, I, well, I remember when I had why I don't know we had a vision like. Your my back, uh, my back oh, was yeah. turned, and your back, and we both had trainer yeah, masks. You just was there, it was back to camera, and I was there. Yeah, we were posing. All. I didn't know what it was. It was in the, it was in the trees in the middle yeah, of yeah, in, in Brixton. In Brixton, <laughs> people was walking past us, but that was our Mbappe. That was our pose. We done that first. The yeah, we done it first. Arms, so off. That was back in 08. But the thing is that what I would say is through that there was even though um it it it, it maybe wasn't the right execution. There was yeah, yeah, yeah. the behind it like taking initiative to. You know, get, um, get someone to take a Wait, was David even a photographer? You took the pictures, right? Uh, and what camera was it on? See, there's a lot of questions we don't want to go to. Let's just skim over it because that, that, that was my mom's camera. Was it your girl's camera? David, he's not um he's not a photographer, but yeah, just, he's not. He's just not. the energy, I feel like he saw our vision. Yeah. And literally I just remember just calling him like, yo, David. That's what I'm saying. Where are you, man? Let's yeah, exactly. Take some exactly. Photos. Like, yeah, take some photos. So and then yeah. So we've done that. That was towards the, the, the start as well when we made like our first First batch. T- batch of t-shirts. Oh, t-shirts, yeah. And we did make it, like, I remember, because what we done is we went and we ordered a, a large batch of t-shirts. Again, we done certain things correctly, but I just feel like, again, the execution wasn't right because yeah. I think we made some good t-shirts, good quality. Yeah, we yeah. had a good logo, good design and stuff. But the problem was is we didn't execute properly. Like, we just gave it away for free. Like, we were yeah, like... Yeah, it was very given. And what we did is we skipped a lot of steps. So what we did at the time, we would skip to the end, mm-hmm. which is the pretty stuff of the product. Yeah. But exactly. we missed out the marketing plan of action, where we wanted it to be. So that's what we've and learned. I think that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry to cut you off, but that's what I'm saying. And that's what we'll get into is like, with fitness as well, don't always believe the hype. Don't yeah, always just look at the finished article. The trend, yeah. Because as we go along our journey and what we've learned, a hundred percent, I think that's what we bought into the hype, like being a being a business owner and having our own fitness yeah, brand yeah, and our sure, own clothing sure. and stuff like that. And then it was only as we went across and we started doing things, we're like, wait, why did we do that? Like, yeah, why sure, did we do sure. that? But it's because we saw someone on social media probably, and we just saw the finished article and we said we want that, but yeah, we didn't do yeah, yeah. those steps leading up to it. So taking pictures of it, then we set up the website. Then to be fair, we didn't even know a lot of things about having a website. Yeah. Not at all. We didn't understand anything about tracking how much people are going onto your site. Yeah. Where in the world they're coming from. So Again, we, we just wanted a finished website with a finished brand, but we didn't, we didn't take the basic steps, steps. To build the foundations. To build the to foundations, like, yeah. To grow it. So, yeah, to, to be totally honest, um, the clothing at the time, it didn't really work. So I thought yeah. like, 
from that we had to yeah, like, it was a, we can say it was like obviously it was still fit credibles but we didn't follow we didn't implement what, what we were good at and yeah. what we what we knew we were just trying to do what we thought was cool to be what we thought was cool what we liked doing yeah what we liked doing and, and then stuff. that's where the emotional investment came in rather than the actual business yeah, exactly. mindset to it so then from there that's what we had to because i think it was a yeah it was a long while we was trying to push this yeah we was a long while trying to push it and then, and then through friends and family telling us not even telling us but asking us certain questions and then yeah. you step back we couldn't answer them yeah it's like yeah there's a few questions where people yeah, ask they you couldn't, like, we couldn't what answer direction it. you're going into we had to step back to like see the bigger picture going forward as well so growing in uni as well we start to yeah, learn yeah, as we yeah, went yeah. across we start to learn certain things and um i think the big takeaway for me Mm -hmm. through that period is is like we was very relying on other people yeah, we're yeah, very yeah, relying on this person to take the shoot and make it look 100%. good and stuff for like that and i think we learned that regardless of what it's always going to come down to you you've mm. got to essentially drag the business drag you know your 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 fitness goal you've got to drag it you've got to do it yourself because yeah, no one yeah. will do it you have the best pt in the world he's not going to do it for you yeah so yeah, what yeah. we learned especially during that period is whatever we want to do we've got to do it ourselves first and foremost yeah, we've yeah. got to be and we're going to go into it as well, of like what, what qualities we'd say makes a good leader. Yeah. But we've got, we had to be the leaders of what we were trying to implement. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, it's, um, it's our lives anyway. So yeah. we just had to take control. So yeah. And you always say it like, to be honest, this is what this podcast is about is being honest. People, a lot of people are just followers. They just follow the trends. Yeah. They don't, they're not proactive. They react to what's happening. That's we, we noticed that, you know, if anything, you've got to be the leader of it. You've got to implement it first. Yeah. You've got to live it. You've got to show the passion, the energy for it. You've got to believe in it. You've got to set the right steps and then people will follow you on that journey. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's something that we missed at that first part. Going forward, yeah. we scrapped the clothing, mm -hmm. then um, had to streamline the whole business and then we focused mainly on like the personal training side of yeah. things. And then that's where I feel like we found our, our direction. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I think like throughout, we've always been very interested in like reading mm -hmm. and, and doing the research at times to a certain extent. Yeah. But what we do is we wouldn't, when there's a statement or when there's um, kind of like the finished package someone else is presenting us, mm. we wouldn't question it and delve deep. So I feel a lot of the time we was getting advice and we were looking at things, but we were only taking that surface value. So for example, someone saying, if you want to be, successful you've got to do what you want to do every day you know certain things like that like quotes like that so we would just yeah, implement yeah. that but we wouldn't put the groundwork in that if you do want to do that you've got to understand why you're doing it why yeah. it's important to you why people are going to benefit of it these sorts of things we just kind of just said yep yeah, this is what we're going to do we're going to go in this direction and i think it's very easy if you implement that method you don't stick to anything you just go from this thing yeah, 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 to that thing to that thing to that thing because you just read it in a book or you read like a a business or an entrepreneurial yeah, you know yeah. that's what that's what a lot of people do it's like when you see a lot of these people online yeah they're not answering questions mm -hmm. or they're not saying anything yeah that's true they're just like should I tell you why, bro? Because there's no, there's no, there's no like, understanding. There's, so even though you remember, no, but there's no like, there's no yeah. magic pill. There's, People just like to complicate it or just you know package something in a different way and make it seem. There's no key to again. No one can tell you this is exactly what you need to do step by step. Yeah, people could just speak from their experience and yeah. say key statements that like work hard and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like that's because I don't feel like anyone really has an understanding what they do. Is at a time it wasn't cool to read books. Now it's very cool to read books. So what people are doing is reading books. Mm -hmm. They'll get asked a question about the book and they'll just say a quote That's true. instead of actually answering that question. So That's you true. could ask me, so Ezra, how are you going to change your life? And then I'll go to you, impossible, it's nothing. It's, true. it's like, it's you're true. not it's answering true. the true. question. True. So it's I feel true. like there's been a not. clear disconnect between understanding yeah. and then applying it. That's true. It's and true. then... That's what I feel like any journey is about. It's like, if you understand, for example, if we relate to fitness, yeah. you understand your fitness goal. Yeah. You need to, once you understand it, then you can make the steps, apply those steps to it's achieve true. that goal. It's true. It's true. Otherwise, you're just going to be- In a circle. Look, going in a you're circle. Just going around in a circle. That's but it. yeah, back to it. So yeah, so at this point, that's a bit about Fit Credibles. And at this point, I'm just going to yeah. say, me and you, we were very like-minded, I think, 
we both had similar goals, similar interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, because we'd known each other for a few years by now, we knew we wanted to do this together. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think it, it's, but if you could, like, let's just go quickly. What would you say some of your qualities are? And then I'll yeah, say yeah. some of mine and then how they come together. What would you say some of your <laughs> qualities are bringing into like the Fit Credibles? So it's literally um, creativity is firstly yeah, one thing and then that. how to like, Structure um, things, definitely. Yeah, structure things and plan. So I'm quite analytical and I like to look out, look at stuff from outside looking in. Mm-hmm. And then um, just being honest in terms of being honest with myself yeah. and other people. Because what I've realized is even across this journey, the moment you're able just to strip your ego away yeah. and not take things personally, you can actually mm-hmm. improve whatever you want to do. So I'll say creativity, structure, Honesty, yeah, and then um, I'd also say like getting from A to B is like like you know yeah, literally yeah. just you know what I mean just getting there straight yeah, forward what it needs to be taken. I think yeah, you're very I'll, good at at that like, very direct. Yeah, That's and good. I, yeah, direct and I simplify things a lot. Yeah, and then I'm just a, just a cracking lad. Yeah, such funny lad, ain't it? Seems like it. <laughs> Seems like yeah. Um, <laughs> for myself, I'll say I think I'm very good at understanding and helping people. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah, a lot yeah. of our clients that come in. I mean, I'm very good at working with them. I'm very good at that people's person. I think I'm good at that. 100, I agree. I and think I bring a lot of energy and passion. I love what I do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I work hard. I think I'm a hard worker. Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a grinder. He's <laughs> a, a grinder. grinder. So I feel like, yeah, those, and I think those two are brought together make Fit Credibles a dangerous package. And that's why I say we're so confident that this, we are the leading fitness brand. I'm yeah, you've got to say it. We are the leading out, fitness yeah. brand in the world. That's how it and is. That that showcases the passion of that Venus. showcases it the passion exactly that. But bro, <laughs> talking about passion, yeah. we're gonna go into some like quick fire round questions. Basically, yeah, what we'll do is because there's two of us, I'll ask the question, then you can answer first, then I'll answer. A yeah, lot. Yeah. We got so many questions on Instagram, so thank you to everyone who sent it. Yeah, we put yeah, a few yeah. posts um, on the story, yeah, yeah, and people yeah, sent yeah. some questions. So we got loads. We got like more than a hundred to be honest. So would we'll you go yeah, through yeah. some really quickly? I'll pick them out. Then you go first. Then okay. I'll go, right? Cool. Nice one. What's your favorite drink? Um, so my favorite drink. Well, I don't drink alcohol, so my favorite drink. I mean, like this is beverage, beverage, like any beverage drink. So it can be, you know, fizzy drink. Uh, do you know what? Um, ginger beer. Ginger beer, fair enough. Yeah, it has so. to be ginger beer, but it has to be the fiery one. It can't be this sugar-free stuff that they're trying to push out. This one hundred percent, yeah. Fiery ginger beer. What about Bro, you? Oh, you're meant to be the PT. Like you really got to be pushing like. The cleaner versions, no? Then my healthy drink would be ginger tea. Yeah, all right. Cool. Lemon and ginger tea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll probably say, you know what? Iced tea. Just because you know when it's... <laughs> you no, but you know when tea. It's, bro, let, let, you know when it's hot. <laughs> if it's hot, ask anyone. Everyone knows. If it's hot weather, obviously not hot uh, here a lot of the time. Like... But I don't know. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, yeah, consuming what, a lot of it. Lipton's? Yeah. Iced tea? Iced tea's all right, bro. With a bit of ice. Oh, man. In the iced tea. Ugh. No, yeah, not feeling enough. that. Yeah. Feeling All right, <laughs> cool. Question number two. Um, when are you m- your most productive? At night. Literally, I think it's maybe because of uni. Mm-hmm. I can't work during the day. And then I just like taking naps as well. I think I'm the opposite, bro. I think I'm more morning. of a yeah, like not early morning, yeah, but like yeah, yeah. late morning, like 10, 10 a.m. upwards. I think that's when I come alive. No, I say evenings. All right, cool. Summer or winter? Winter. Yeah, I say summer. What winter? Yeah, you winter I cold? like. Because I'm one of those weird people who are like just chilling in my onesie, watching Harry Potter. In which subject were you worst at school? So what was your worst subject at school? Nothing. I was all around. I told you. I was yeah, you got like A's and B's. You got, so, you done quite well. But out of the package, probably the worst was like geography or... Geography. Yeah, of, yeah. For me, it's probably maths. Nah, yeah, I just didn't like I just don't know. I like science nah, I like and math, English yeah. and stuff. I even like English, but not math. Maths was a bit... Techie. Yeah. What advice would you give to your younger self, obviously, you know, yeah. like some 50 year old guy speaking to like 25 year old stuff, but like just say Ezra from five years ago. Um, so the advice I'll give to my younger self is literally just to like experience more. So get out there more um, and take advantage of everything that's out there, literally, because I feel like before you stay in your area when you're younger. It's only as you get older, you start to go out to uni, go out to work mm. and leave the area and meet new people. So I'll say experience more and experience it early. That way you can make your mistakes. You can learn from them and then you will see that you grow as a person and adapt mm. a lot quicker. So yeah, that'll be the advice I'll give. 
I would say for myself, just be patient, man. Just be patient. You know, everything will come in due time. So just, yeah, just take your time and be patient. All right, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Pack me. You just said a minute ago, like, <laughs> <laughs> branching out of that, bro. You gave us a whole speech. No, nah, joking. Like, yeah. um, to be fair, I'll probably stay in the UK, but I'll move out to the sticks. So I doubt I'll move to, like, another country unless I own my own island. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'll probably move somewhere, like, that's out an... into the sticks and just get, yeah. like, a, a big house. Yeah, that's an interesting one. What about you? Where would I live anywhere in the world? Definitely be somewhere hot, somewhere nice, warm, good food, somewhere like Mediterranean area, region. Fair enough, yeah. Somewhere around there, probably move there. Okay, cool. What is success for you? What is success for Ezra? Success for me is just like freedom, being able to create your own schedule and just wake up whenever you want, do what you want and not be literally like confided to like everyone else's rules. So creating that freedom, and me and my cousin talk about it all the time. It's like creating your own world where you're just free to make your own decisions and move freely and fluid. So yeah, that's success to nice, me. That is a good answer. Success to me. I think just um, like similar, touching on the same lines that you said, just being able just to, uh, you know, be free to make decisions that you want to and just be able to like help and inspire people as well. 100%. Because at the end of the day, um, Again, we'll get into it with social media. There's a lot of people that are influencers overnight. And 100%. even us, we're still learning, we're still developing. So I feel like at the end of this journey, we'll be able to to give give more back. Yeah, give 100%. more back and, and, and a better, definitely better story for that. Um, what's the first thing? This is an interesting one. What's the first thing you notice when you meet someone for the first time? What's the first thing you notice? <laughs> what do you mean? What's the first? So if you meet someone for the first about time. About them? Yeah, like what do you pick up? Like they're, they're, they're trainers. They're, oh, oh. What's the first thing you kind of. Do you know what it is? It'll be like. So physical thing mm. would be like the smell. But, okay. but energy, I feel like I pick up on people's energy first. Oh, okay, cool. So it's like when you meet someone, how they greet you. And yeah, so I would say energy, but yeah. I feel like a physical thing would be. The smell. smell. Yeah, no, it's true. I'll definitely say energy. Just their vibes, innit? Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of how they come, like approach you and speak to you, innit? It's how they act, carry themselves basically. 100%. Ah, right, this is a good one. Did you have a nickname at school? I'm mean, like, I did that one myself. Oh, uh, you're a I had a few, <laughs> a few nicknames. Um, I had Ezzy B. That was probably the one that carried through. And then Ez. Then you got those random people that mix up your name. Called me Israel, Azul, Azra. Yeah, you always get that one, isn't it? Yeah. You go, my name's Eunice. Yanis. Yes. Oh, I was like, you know what? Let's just move on. Whatever you want. But yeah, so Ez, Ezzy B was the. Nice. Cool. cool. Me, just Yubes. Yeah, know, that's your one now, isn't it? Dude, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. What would you say is your proudest achievement to this point? Um, proudest achievement to this point is literally being able to do for Incredibles and literally like, have that funding our lives really so it's um not having to go into work as we said before we've had many jobs but proudest moment now is literally getting fit credibles to a state where it actually pays us mm. to live and you get that fit credible money yeah yeah you're get, getting most of it man see you buy some books oh, bro, you've got it. yeah for me probably just Honestly, like same thing, just being able just to be financially free and being yeah. able just to do this every day, like what what we we love, but with purpose. Hundred percent. With purpose. That's the main thing. That's my biggest achievement to this point. Hopefully, there's gonna be a, a, a lot more to come as well. Um, if you could pick a song to sing, which song would you pick and why? To sing. Yeah. Uh, I know mine already. I'm not gonna lie. It will be that Drake and Brent. Fires waste waste your time. Yeah, can you give us a little? I don't know that song. <coughs> I ain't singing that. <laughs> For me, it would be Usher Climax. Is it Climax? Climax. Yeah, no, I got those notes in it. You got to sing like that. I hit them notes. Go on. If you if you if they stick around for the whole episode, I'll do it at the end. Wow. Sing it All right, cool. <laughs> hit those vocals for you guys. All right, night in or night out. Night in. Money or love. Money. Are you picking money? Or love? <laughs> um, I'll pack a definitely. I'll pick a night in and. 
and love as well. So he's the emotional one. Yeah, yeah. No, you're feeling really bad. Yeah. Um, when you're not doing Fit Credibles, what's your favorite thing to do outside? Who's the Ezra outside of Fit Credibles and personal training? Um, I like to do sports, chill, chill with mates, um, and um, eat Nando's, man. Oh, you love Nando's. Man. Yeah. Nando's, if you're watching this, Give him we a need black a card, yeah. Give man. him a, we need spice, that. Spice, All right, spice. let's just finish off with the last few really quickly. What was your first job? Uh, Mark Spencer's. So I was oh, actually, that's cool. Yeah, Mark Spencer's in Enfield. Yeah, that's cool. Perfect. Uh, me, sweatshop, I said, obviously. Sweatshop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not sweatshop, black. Like, <laughs> not the A sweatshop. <laughs> the, the, the yeah, the, shop. yeah like the sweatshop, the run-in store. Yeah. Um, when would you like to retire? No, I want to try and retire. The next couple years. Yeah? Yeah. Is it right now, isn't it? After this podcast. Yeah, after the today. podcast goes out, isn't it? Same, same. Okay. Um, who would you want to be stranded with in an island if you could pick one person? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can see the stress in your eyes. I'd say my niece. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. a sensible option. It's a sensible option. I say my niece, yeah, because children, you know, they're just <laughs> they're joy. Yeah, they're joy to be around. Energy, yeah, positive vibes all the time. So yeah. I say my niece. I'm going to say me, but that's cool. Yeah, you know, you uh, just. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll do two more because honestly, we've got loads. Okay, so dinner with five people in history, and you're picking the people on the table. Who do you pick? Um, anyone throughout history you can pick. Anyone throughout history? Yeah, Kobe Bryant, Jay Z. Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano, yeah. These are all big inspirational people. Then someone like, probably Elon Musk. Elon Musk, yeah. And then a final person. Steve Jobs. A Shant, you're a Halle Berry. Halle Berry, fair enough. That's a, that's just a, so divide, can, that, a diverse yeah, just to table, mix it up yeah. a bit, you know? Uh, for me, I'll probably, Nelson Mandela. The stories speak for themselves. You're just going to, you know, be listening to some great, great moments. Yeah. Uh, Martin Luther King as well. <laughs> Coming through, that'll be an interesting conversation, definitely. See what he's been through. Uh, sports star, I would say Michael Jordan, just because, you know, he reached the top and he stayed there for so many years. So that you got your sports star there. Tiger Woods, I just want to know about his work rate, his ethics, his ethic. He's just, yeah, you know, yeah. his consistency. And then um, not other scandals, but the he had. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. And then the last one I'll probably pick is someone like uh, another great leader. Actually, no, Elon Musk. Because he's relevant right now, right? Yeah, he's, So he's I'll probably a, just, yeah. just go for that. All right, cool. And then we'll go for one more. Let me just pick one more on here. I like this one. This is a good one. Let's go for this one. If you were like prime minister, what would your first rule be? If you were like ruler or prime minister, what would your first rule that you'd introduce? What would it be? Um, Free gyms. Free gyms to everyone, man. Yeah, free gyms, gyms. Exactly, yeah. Gyms Making free, sure nationwide. A more in school, more PE classes. You know, make yeah, that just is literally it, make yeah. fitness more accessible, accessible to all, yeah. and free. Exactly, and just helping people more. I know it's not the easiest thing to do, yeah, but yeah. just supporting people as much as you can, doing initiatives and campaigns for for young people as well. You know, 100%. future generations. But all right, cool. That's that done. We're gonna go into a few topics, like I said. So yeah, we've got quite a few here that we, we we're gonna cover. Again, it's all just to support people in their fitness journey, help them they go as they go through it. So what I want to do is. I think it would be good to start off with some fitness myths and fads, especially relating in terms to like nutrition mainly, because I think that's something that a lot of people, and then we'll also go to in terms of gym. And then from there, we can veer off to good advice that we we, we can kind of give. So according to the UK uh, dietitians, many of us would like to lose loads of pounds. However, um, this is why we're going to go into this. You shouldn't rely on quick fixes, mm -hmm. you know, miracles, these sorts of things, because all they'll do is promise loads of weight loss and without realistic e expectations, okay? So let's just go into what a fad is. So a fad yeah. diet is a diet that is a kind of plan where you eat very restrictive diets or very restrictive foods or unusual kind of combinations of foods for short period of times that often lose tons of weight very quickly. However, most people get fed up with this, these restrictive diets, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're hard to maintain. And then what happens is they have a bad relationship with food, they start to eat more, and then they often um, kind of have a negative connotation with healthy or let's say healthy eating. Okay, cool. I'm going to go through some fads. Let's just let's just put them out there just so, so people know and they can stay away from them. So there's a few that I've been looking at. So I actually got this, um, the 25 worst diets or fitness myths apparently yeah, according yeah, yeah. to 2022. Just go with them. So the first one's called the HC G diet. 
HCG diet, okay? okay? So basically what that is, is it requires you to consume just 500 calories, yeah, yeah per day while su supplementing with, hu um, so HCC is a human chronic, um, I can't even say that word, but basically it's a <laughs> pregnancy hormone. Okay. That is a falsely associated uh, weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens is they pump this hormone into you, you have 500 calories. Mm -hmm. Apparently, you know, it makes you lose weight. So basically women produce it while they're pregnant. And it basically apparently boosts a man's testosterone as well. So basically they stick to 500 calories and they, they, they inject themselves with this stuff. Apparently a few people have been doing it. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, to be fair, I've never heard of that. That sounds crazy. Yeah. But <laughs> even just down with the maths, if you're making someone eat 500 calories a day, they're going to lose weight anyway. Exactly. So the Lord knows what they're pumping into them as well on top of that. But I doubt it's what they're pumping into them that's making them lose the weight. It's probably the fact they're on 500 Whatever you calories. Do, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Whatever yeah, yeah. diet you tell someone to have 500 calories, but they lose the weight. Yeah, literally. So. But, the, um, but the problem is that often happens is um, if you're sticking to that 500 calorie mark, yeah. your m metabolism will adjust to that, you know? So, you, so you, it gets comfortable yeah, yeah, that yeah. way. What happens when you, you start eating more, your, you, you know, your, your maintenance goes up, you're going to put that weight back on. It's so it's not realistic. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole point about fads. It's not realistic. So... Um, is that one to stay clear of then, yeah? That's Smith. crazy, because 500 calories anyway, what's yeah. that like? Stuck a bit of rice and the half a oh, chicken. Nice. I, don't even want to do, I don't even want to think about it's it. That's how even, crazy it is, yeah. It's not really, it's like a bowl of cocoa pot. <laughs> the werewolf diet. What's that? This so basically, uh, this is based on cycles of the moon, such as fasting with juice for 24 hours during a full moon and not eating past 6 p.m. during other moon phases. So the diet is restrictive again. Hence why there's instant loss, of course. Um, and um, that makes it a challenge to sustain, obviously, long term. So instead of um, eating based on, you know, just like uh, um, cycles, you, you eat based on, on the moon. So moon, and moon size, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like it's very restrictive again. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you get the idea? People just kind of like. Yeah, most of these things, regardless of the diet, if it's going to encourage you to lose weight, it's going to restrict your calories anyway. But yeah. what they're doing is just putting a new name on it. We could do the Fit Credibles diet, say don't exactly. eat nothing for 10 days. Exactly. You're going to lose weight. You're so. going to lose weight, but you're, guess what? You're going to put it back on. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, the keto diet. So obviously, yeah, you know, yeah. this is one that's quite popular. So celebrities like Kourtney Kardashian, Halle Berry, um, they're fans of it. So basically, essentially, it's a low carb diet. So essentially, you're cutting out the carb, focusing mm. on the fats and the proteins. Um, so again, you might start a lot of these, you're going to start losing weight at the beginning mm -hmm. just because your body's, it's something new for your body. Your body's reacting. So you're losing weight, but the diet is extremely, that's what people forget. It's yeah, extremely yeah, yeah. restrictive. It is extremely restrictive. And you, for anything to achieve any fitness goal, any nutritional goal, it's about consistency. What can yeah. you do long-term? So if you, I don't know who can stick to 500 calories or, you know, a keto diet long-term. Yeah. It's not realistic. Because then when you start, when you go off it and you go back to your normal tendencies, you're just going to put the weight back on. 100%. And maybe even more because, you know. Well, this is a problem that a lot of people are facing is that we want results quickly. Yeah. And then because of that, you're more likely to be enticed by these crazy quick fixes. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to cause your body more harm. Mm -hmm. And if not your body, definitely your mental state when you see that you're putting the weight back on so quickly as well. Mm -hmm. So stay clear Yeah 100% There's so many more The zero sugar diet yeah. You know that's another one I mean Again that restricts fruits then Because Just sugars and yeah, everything And everything Yeah I would say Cutting out refined sugars Which I've tried as well That might be a bit more Beneficial if you want to cut out Some sugars But All sugars It's not even realistic Honestly man There's so many Like the list is full Of diets that are out there That are promising weight loss and you know they're just based on another like you know like you see in the moon one you know what has the moon got to do with anything what's it got to do with your <laughs> diet that's what i'm saying again the five bite diet this is another one five so, bite yeah the five bite diet so apparently <laughs> listen to this yeah so um it was uh, created by someone who, who's based in california um so the five bite diet requires you to skip breakfast and then only eat five bites of your meals at lunch at dinner so this is a very small portion. This very small portions of this diet will promote. So very small portions of the diet mm -hmm. will promote weight loss. But the incredible restriction of eating only ten bites of food per day is not healthy way to lose weight. Of course. So that's why you only have five bites. So there's a lot of food wastage going there. Yeah, you, but again, depends. Because some people have big bites. 
So it's all relative. You could take. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah, I've back. seen people <laughs> yeah. eat one burger in one bite. Yeah, it's uh, true. That's it. That's what I didn't consider. But obviously, in the real world, yeah, world this is like smaller bites, which is again is just crazy. I mean, throughout time, and this is going to be, and this is why we're here on this podcast, and we want to help people. Throughout time, they're going to be these products that are going to be yeah. repackaged, resold to you, and. Do you know what I mean? It's going to yeah, happen yeah, again yeah. and again. Fitness influencers that like we we discussed this many times mm. over the phone and in person, like these fitness influencers or people who have a great physique and have reached that level yeah. of their life, they might be promoting some of these things because that's the finished article. They can mm. say what they want because they're there at that point. 100%. If it may be genetics, them working hard, whatever it may be, they can promote it mm. because they're at that stage and it's an easier sell, an easier yeah, buy. Yeah, yeah. But I guarantee you, they didn't start off like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, From sure. when they started in their fitness journey, they didn't start with these these fad diets. They're starting at the end and only showing you the end. Yeah, that's true. Because if you speak to any influencer or anyone that trains in the gym, they're not going to tell you to not eat food to lose weight. Everyone loves food or the majority of people exactly. love food. So exactly. It's an easy sell. Deliveroo, Uber Eats. Yeah, yeah, all so these things are booming right now. Fast food. So it's such an easy sell yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to put this forward. So... Please, uh, one advice that we'd give is don't fall into the fitness myths. Just really quickly, mm. how can someone um, know what's key indications of a fad, a fitness f uh, nutritional myth and what you should implement, what you should follow? Like, let's just give a few tips because I think that'll be very helpful. So go on, one. A clear indication of a fad or a fitness myth is something that is promising quick results. Mm -hmm. No one can promise you quick results. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing to watch out for. Another thing, if anyone's telling you to be overly restrictive, you always got to ask why. Yeah. Because unless it's a health issue where you need to cut out certain foods, you shouldn't really be cutting out any foods anyway because you need a balanced diet to make sure you're getting the correct vitamins um, and nutrients as well. So yeah. there are two things. I would say as well, um, like promising like a magic pill or a magic, um, you know, or drinking... Some was it like um ginger or like lemon or you know, just or you know when people say I've heard oh, loads okay, of time that yeah, like, yeah, yeah. drinking this sort of thing, if you drink it, it helps flush it, it out. Will fl yeah, flush out like you yeah, lose yeah, weight, yeah. it'll flush out pounds. But this is the thing, another thing as well is what people miss out is that some of these things do work, but they have to work within like a balanced diet. They don't work in isolation. So hundred percent. And then if you want to burn fat, you need to ask yourself if you want to burn fat or weight. Yeah. Because what people end up focusing on is the weight loss. Yeah. But that doesn't actually mean- seen it so many times. You've actually, seen it so many yeah. times. So it doesn't actually mean you're burning fat. Which People I mean, don't understand why, you know, um, relating to men a lot of the time, they're getting yeah. skinny, but they're having the belly. They still have that. Exactly. That so belly. you're just losing weight, but you're still a bit fat or you still got fat because you haven't burned it. So yeah. I will say the key thing, anything you're going to put into your body or anything you're going to do, just always ask why. And see if you don't, if you're not sure, seek help in it. Like there's no yeah, harm yeah. in seeking help. Is this right for me? But you know? then you, there's too many professionals out there saying, so you need to. Yeah, too many, you got to be sure. You got to yeah, be sure. Too many professionals out there. So saying a magic pill, a magic bullet, promising rapid weight loss in a week. That's not really like yeah. in that like couple of days, you're going to lose this much in a couple of days. Not That's realistic. unrealistic. I think as well, focusing on your appearance rather than the health benefits yeah, yeah, is true. another fad that like you said, your health should always be number one. And that's again, fitness influencers. You see yeah. them, they look like that. I want to look like that right away. But health like, over exactly, aesthetics. Because a lot of the fitness influencers that you see, they might look good, but you don't know what health issues they're dealing with as well. Yeah. And another thing that people don't notice is a mental health is still a health issue. Understood. So even though someone might look fit and healthy, you don't actually know what's really going on. 100%. This is links to the previous point and also one that we can go into is if they're selling the product or the supplement, that's bias. If, you, yeah, if they're 100%. selling the product or the supplement and they're asking you to take their supplement or product and it's worked for them, yeah. then that's bias. You, you know, you need to be very wary of that. Again, there's people out there, fitness influencers, you know, if they're promoting something, do yeah. your research, who owns the company, 
who it is, a lot of the time you'll find out that they've got a percentage in it or they've got invested interest. Yeah, They're making money off it. And that's another thing that we get into really quickly. Mm. The problem with the fitness industry at the moment is because of this fitness in influencer thing, now brands are giving people percent that um, commission off yeah, of selling yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, it's in their interest to sell this thing to you because they're going to make money out of it. Even if they don't believe in it, yeah, they true. sell it, they get a percentage, they get commission. It's a win-win for them and the yeah, business. Yeah. Who's losing? You're losing out. You're the one who's getting depressed and thinking, why is it not working yeah, for me? I'm yeah. the only one. And he he looks like it's working for everyone else. And you're going through that cycle and then, you know, it, it, it just it's not just, it's just not going your way. Deal with it from the root cause, man. Don't but don't just take it at face value. Do the research, understand. Yeah, and the key thing that we want to put out there is that we're not anti-supplements. Yeah. Supplements can work, they do work, but the key word is they're meant to be there to supplement yeah. an already healthy diet to bridge the gap, for example, if you're lacking proteins. For example, so we're not anti-supplements. Mm -hmm. We're anti the fads, the myths that people are putting out there with lack of research, lack of mm -hmm. knowledge. And then they're misleading people that probably have less knowledge than them by like the glitz and gamma that they're putting out there. Look, this, is, this might be a bit of a, maybe a crazy statement people might think, but I think yeah. they should remove the commission out of PTs. Only certain brands such mm -hmm. as, because we do that, like, you know, Optimum Nutrition, these tested mm -hmm. brands that have the right facilities in place. You know, these are the only brands that can offer com um, commission if you sell black like, products under your name and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. These brands that just come into the market tomorrow and offer influencers and get commission, I don't think that they should be, I don't think that should be allowed because what's happening is they're having an invested interest in just selling that product to you or they're getting paid to push it forward. I think there should be something done that cuts that out. I don't know. That's my opinion. It depends on the brand, but because to be fair, a lot of these brands, they're just selling protein shakes and stuff like that. But to be again specific, skinny tees, for example, yeah, yeah. the booty tees and yeah. stuff I'm saying like that. that. People, like someone could just make, yeah. what I'm saying is because someone can make a brand tomorrow yeah, that yeah, yeah, you yeah. eat this, you take this pill, um, you're going to lose this amount of weight. We've tried and tested it. You've got some fake testimonials, some guy who's there and it's yeah, so yeah, fake yeah, yeah. because all they've done was just Photoshopped him. All right, cool. Anyway, that's, that's yeah, their yeah, testimonial. Sure, 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 sure. And then what they're going to do is go into the market. And what's the easiest way to get into market influence? People go to influencers. We've got backing behind us. We've got money. Yeah, if you push us our yeah, product, yeah. we'll give you this amount of commission. We'll give you this amount of things. You know, people that are there, fitness influencers, that's their job, isn't it? They need to make money. Money for mech. Do you get what I'm saying? They can, no, but honestly, yeah. they, they're money to make. That's, 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 that's their thing. So they're going to push it because they get, they've got an invested interest in it. That's and that true, can't true, be allowed because if yeah. they've got an invested interest in it, they won't. I guarantee you, if the same product came to them and they wasn't being, they weren't getting a commission or they weren't paying to them, they would look at it. Yeah, but you don't know. So I, I get what you're saying, but we can't say. Yeah. Because everyone's got an invested interest in everything. We've got an invested interest in Fit Credible. And what true. we're saying could be. True, Could be true. nonsense. So how does I'm saying? What's the confusion? How do people deal with that then? If yeah, someone's, dude, to yeah. be fair, there's research out there that you can do. Mm -hmm. So and a lot, like a lot of these supplements, they've been tested by reputable like institutes where you can actually find out whether protein shakes work, and you can even go into as much details whether protein shakes work for working out, whether creatine works for sports performance, caffeine yeah. sports performance, stuff like that. So there is research out there, it's down to us as well as um, a population to actually take the time out to research because we don't. Yeah, we That's don't, why sure. people are buying these things because it's easy. So it's an easy fix. Yeah, I'm not, we can't really blame these people because at the end of the day, if someone's offering them money, they got to feed their family. So again, we're not anti them. We and truly, it's, we just look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, raw. We're true. just seeing this thing. Yeah, let me buy it. We should do that. Let's research that. Yeah. But I get your point. Yeah, you do, you do. Another thing that we, uh, to go on is people that recommend diets or yeah. recommend things in general fitness that are based on single studies or that are based off anecdotal evidence that or personal, yeah, 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 someone yeah. knows. So you've seen it probably many times, like someone says, oh, I know like MR or James who done the keto diet and they, and they lost this amount of um, yeah, weight, yeah, but yeah. it worked for them. They're doing it. So um, that's another, another fad, another issue that happens. Yeah, yeah but again, industry. it's just like, misinformation and what people that are selling you stuff try to do is just tap into your emotions. So mm -hmm. if you see Emma, for example, and she's exactly like you, or you feel that she's like you, you're going to buy into what Emma's done because you're buying into Emma's story. So that's all they do is like literally tap into your emotions. And there's always going to be a thousand Emmas out there. 
Mm-hmm. Literally, like millions of Emmas out there. And they just need some- um, Emma, if you're if there is an Emma, yeah, watch us. We're not talking about you. Yeah, we just said maybe a million Emmas out yeah, there, for see, example. See, so, it, yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Is just we need to remove that emotion behind a lot of the purchases yeah. and the things we buy into, and mm. literally do the research because research can't lie. It's some, true, sometimes, it's true. sometimes, sometimes, research it, can't lie. Sometimes, like, but you got to see the like again, not single study research, yeah, like yeah, about yeah. um, you know, various researchers various that are brought research, together that yeah. are you know touching on the same thing, you know? And then again, you have to look at the sample size. Like we've done this, you know, the sample, sample size, how many people are doing yeah, it? Cause yeah. you could do a study with five people. It was, you know, sample size, how many years it went through. And then again as well, just tapping into, this is like just a bit off topic, but tapping into the mental side of things as well. Cause a lot of these studies use placebos. So your brain is actually so powerful that you could think you're taking this magic pill and your brain will make you feel these extra benefits. True. Whereas true. you're just literally, having a sweet, which is full of sugar. Yeah. Sure. So look into all these things to make a correct decision, I believe. And then the last one I'll say is, these all kind of linked together is, being overweight is related to a food allergy, a yeast infection, or they need, for them to improve their, their diet or nutrition, they just can't do it. They can't have a balanced diet mm-hmm. um, and follow, you know, what we always say on our Instagram, we always promote because they need to be hypnotized. They, you know, I've heard it before loads of times, honestly. No, actually, yeah, I yeah. had to be, I, I've got an issue. I, I, I just, no, I can't stop binge yeah. eating. I need to see um someone so, for, a yeah, psychiatrist or, therapist, or yeah, 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 a therapist or something to help me with my thing. Mm. Because um yeah, I need to be hypnotized to, 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 to eat a certain way because it just doesn't work. Yeah. No, it's true. To be fair, it does happen. So for those people that need specialist help, I would say seek specialist help. But, for like the vast majority of us, a lot of the changes that we need to make, we can actually make ourselves if we take the time out to. Just one thing, but I, I know that is true. And I'm mm. not saying it for everyone, but at certain times that people haven't taken the right approach, which we're going to say, like, you yeah, know, which we, we, we'll always explain, we'll explain again, but they haven't taken that right approach and just jump to the extreme and jump yeah, to, jump. I can't do it because of this and that yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. but they haven't tried it. Like, you know, yeah, you haven't true, implemented, true. consistency is the key. I'm going to say it, consistency is the key. Mm-hmm. If you implement a healthy, balanced diet with a good amount of you know, protein per meal consistently and you train, you do resistance training, no, it's, it's it'll, it'll work. So just qu- quickly, like, let's just give them some basics. Now we spoke about fads. Let's talk, just briefly talk about some basic guidelines and um, what's the best like, advice that we can give someone in terms of you know, stay away from the fads. So what's, what's the solution? What, what can we offer? Just really quickly, the best advice I'll say for getting the extra pounds is um, making healthier food choices, mm-hmm. right? It's about the choices. You know, that's what it's about. Firstly, um, eating a, a balanced diet, which we said, one um, that is like meal sizes, an appropriate meal size. Mm-hmm. And then also trying to have lean protein with each meal, like 20 to 30 grams. You know, that's quite basic. And we'll obviously go into the X side of things that's, uh, that support that as well, that can, can further support that. But what would you say is, what's some basic guidelines that people should follow? Basic then? guidelines is literally something simple like you just now, drinking more water. Because um, we're made up of 70% water. And if you ask the majority of people, we're not drinking enough water. And I'm not saying water in your tea, water with a touch of fruit, for example, the Volvic. I'm talking about straight, clean water. It's a game changer, I believe. Like, and it's a simple change that, we don't really have an excuse not to be doing. Um, other stuff, I literally walking more, being more active, taking the steps rather than the escalators or the elevator. That will go a far way. And then getting more sleep. Yeah, It's proven that when you sleep more, sleep better, your mood changes. The hormones. Hormones are boosted. Hormones, yeah. Your energy levels are boosted. You even train better. Your appetite improves. So literally those three things alongside training and stuff will boost and take your body to the next level. All right, cool. Perfect. Just to give you a few things of how to avoid fad diets as well, just a few pointers. I'd say uh, keep a diary and a mm-hmm. bit, be a lot more aware about habits like you said. So walking, drinking water, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, exercising more. Um, having regular meals, starting with breakfast. Don't skip breakfast. If you don't like breakfast, you don't eat. That's not a problem. But yeah. don't intentionally skip breakfast because it will help you lose weight. Um, and including protein with each meal, lean protein if possible with each meal. Um, if you can, choosing lower fat options, like fat foods. So having, for example, lean lean protein, like I said, instead of having, um, you know, and having like a lower fat um, dairy option as well, for example, yeah, yeah. if you can. Um, get active. 
be active, like you said, walk around at least 30 minutes a day. And what we get into um, a little later on is all resistance training, implementing resistance training as well as part of your of your uh, if your of your workout. And be realistic with the aim of weight loss. Like literally yeah, be yeah. be realistic. So I mean you can aim a good kind of thing is to aim around 0.5 kilograms, you know, per week or something like that. That's quite realistic. Uh, aim to work for yeah. to going forwards you don't have to lose three kilograms in a week or in a day yeah. do you know what I mean just be realistic about it you know choose the right method you know um, build on those foundations and push forward and if you are struggling with that and you still don't seek professional there's professional help out there GPs doctors you know um, qualified personal trainers and then they'll give you yeah. um, more of a you know more of a better more outlook. More of a better outlook if, if, if you're still facing problems after that. Um, anything to add from that? No, it's perfect. No? Just really quickly, fad diets, they are tempting. You know, it's a quick fix. Like, I'm going to get the results right away. I'm going to lose this amount, you know. But the main thing that you should think is long-term, is it sustainable? Long-term, is it sustainable to have just 500 calories? Long-term, is it sustainable to only eat certain foods and restrict yourself certain foods? Long-term, is it sustainable to only eat when the moon's out or you know, certain things like that, they're not sustainable. So long-term, they're not going to work. Regardless if it's 20 years, 15 years, you will revert back to your old ways and that's where you'll see the problem. So the best way is making healthy food ch um, choices and having a balanced diet. Cool. All right, talking of that, um, there's another one, the next topic that we're going to will be quite interesting, um, is popular exercises or movements that you see a lot of people doing in the gym that you believe can be a waste of time or you don't think they're being effectively implemented. So it's a bit of a difficult one to go into and say because there's no exercise that is a waste of time. You have to put it into context, right? Of what the, what the you know, what the, the benefits of the exercise is, what's the outcome, what you're trying to reach, if it's yeah, rehab, yeah. like an injury, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so if the right um, exercise is done in the right way in any context, it, ha it will have value. But what we're gonna do is go off of, even on social media and stuff, exercises that are glorified, um, and pushed and then people go and do them without you know the correct technique and stuff like that so I'll start off just to give you a, a better idea you've got these videos if you haven't checked them out the glute ones the donkey kickbacks yeah. um, the um, cable machine like all these glute exercises yeah. like the, the, the hip thrust and stuff like that people just see them they look cool um, an influencer for example someone who's got good bodies doing them mm -hmm. let me go through that um, just really quickly my problem with them is is I'd say a high percentage of people are firstly doing them wrong. They're not engaging yeah, yeah. the correct muscles mm -hmm. when they're going through it. And then um, they're doing like a lot of times like 15 to 30 to 50 reps of yeah, it yeah, yeah. without, again, without context. And then the last one is for me is, is the, it's a waste of time because like you've said in the video as well, um, if that's a, um, a preparation exercise mm -hmm. um, for your heavier, more compound lifts, that's fine. I can yeah, understand yeah, that. Yeah. But a lot of people are implementing them as the staple of their workouts. Mm -hmm. Like that's the main, they go in there to go to that inner fire machine. They go in there to do the donkey kickback. That's their session. Yeah. It's based on that. You've obviously done the videos on where people are doing them wrong. Yeah, yeah. Number one, what do you see as the issue with them? Do you agree? Is there any other exercise that you see people doing wrong? Yeah. That you, you got so, all that context. And then also what's a benefit or what's an alternative that you can give to that? So yeah, donkey kickbacks, for example, or resistance band work. I only have a program for my clients. One with gyms, for example, if you have access to a gym and weights, I would either use it as a warm up or as a finisher at the end. It will never be in the main body. Simply because um, a squat, a hip thrust, deadlifts, for example, if you're training your legs and glutes or quads, um, they just pack more of a punch and activate a lot more muscles. So I wouldn't bother wasting my time with a client that has access to gyms yeah, um, with loads of resistance band works, don't kick about stuff like that. However, if that's all you have access to, yeah, then I can see why people do use them. But again, before I even go to that, I would get them to do tempo work. So body weighted squats, doing slow negatives, even doing pulsations at the bottom, mm -hmm. holds and stuff like that. Again, it's different ways to progressively overload before you are there just doing like a loads of. Yeah, because the problem backs. is they'll work to 15 to 30 reps. Hmm. But then the problem is they're not engaging the correct muscles. They're not hmm. getting the pelvic tilt. You know, they're not going through the, the, the correct foundations of the movement. So hmm. what happens is it's too easy. I need to go more. They go up to 50, 
60. So they're getting to the point that they're doing loads, yeah. but they're not doing one correct. Yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of the time when you're seeing a lot of these exercises done, their back is over curved and they're just probably doing more damage to their, their lower back. And speaking of like lower back, stuff like sit-ups, we see a lot of people that are just throwing their body around. Again, yeah. Doing loads of sit-ups, which again, I don't really have a lot of my clients doing sit-ups. I prefer to get them to do more hold movements, exactly. planks, hollow holds, because it engages your core a lot more and it stabilizes um, your core, which has better carryover for when you're doing your lifts, mm -hmm. like um, your squats and deadlifts, for example. So yeah, sit-ups is another exercise which I've seen yeah. where people are just... But like we said, in the right myself. context, every exercise is good. We're not saying these exercises are bad. Don't implement them. But in the right context, you know, yeah. um, if you want to um, if you want to grow your butt, you're better off focusing on those movements, the sumo squats, the RDLs, the hip thrusts. You're, you're better off investing your time on those, getting a mm -hmm. technique right on those, you know, progressively overloading, building on those, and then just you know, finishing off with some of those exercises that is, is said to, to, to complement it. Those, those are the main thing. Another one I've seen, like we're just going to go through a few, the gym, a lot of gyms have them, especially the pure gyms. You know, the inner thigh machine where you just kick it out. I I've like seen people one. like, look, again, if you've got an injury, <laughs> uh, like, you know, you know, for your knee and you're, you're, you're doing rehab work, something like that, I can understand to just, you know, build the strength in that area for your knees. But when you go in, walk in, no warm up, or you just go onto the treadmill for like 10 minutes on, on an incline, then jump straight into that machine, pile on the weight and just build on that. Your whole workout's based on that. You know, like, you, have you seen that when you when you go to your pure, pure gyms? Yeah, no. I, no. You know the fire machine, you put it in, open it up. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that machine, um, yeah, I see it's been like popping a lot. but um, Cause I think a lot of like, yeah. instead of spending your time on there, it might be there's different things that psychologically we can go into, but spending your time on the weight section will be more beneficial for you and implementing those movements that like we're saying, yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to like, just, you know, jumping on the odd machine and just yeah. going a bit, working out on it a bit. Another one is, um, do, if, do you have any that you've seen in the gym that people utilize wrongly or, or stuff, or even on social media exercises? Um, not really. I just feel like from what I've seen just throughout this period is just when people the only thing that I can really say that's just really throwing me off is like when I've seen people lifting weights or using pillows, sorry, as weights. Yeah, it's like little things where people just do anything or what I've seen people doing a lot of the time is doing random movements on top of like a bicep curl. So like a backflip in a bicep curl, for example, which doesn't have any benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's doing a lot of circus tricks with normal exercises. So that's my only problem I've been seeing. All right, cool. Perfect, yeah. I mean, that's it. I think we've covered definitely um, fads and we've covered like the nutrition aspect, which is quite good. So we've given some good tips on there to help people. And we've also discussed about exercises, what people can implement and, you know, what to stay away from. Um, but just one more thing, we'll just go into resistance training. Just one more thing. I wanted to talk about this resistance training um, as a tool for a, a healthier lifestyle and for mm -hmm. fat loss and um, why cardio is looked at in, in, you know, in a lot of people's heads because you see it in the gyms, the treadmills are, are packed, they're busy. Mm -hmm. The weight sections are also busy as well, to be fair. But a lot of people that are starting off in the gym, it's all to support them tend to go to the cardio machines first. And that's looked at as a key to fat loss and health um, more. Obviously we've been personal trainers for a while and we understand the benefits of resistance training. And we know for anyone that wants to lose weight uh, and you know wants to you know improve their overall health and fitness, resistance training is very, very, very important as a <laughs> staple. So why do you think, and what advice actually can we give to people to, to kind of change from cardio machine, cardio machine to, to kind of push and learn more about going into resistance training? Yeah, I feel like no matter what you do, cardio is a good thing. Um, it's really good for your cardiovascular fitness. But I feel like where people are scared of resistance training, so to speak, that's why they stay away from it. Okay. But resistance training is super beneficial for everyone, no matter how old or young you are. Because it even, for example, the studies that show in elderly people, it helps with their bone marrow density as well. Yeah. So it's definitely something that I feel like no matter the age, if you're doing it correctly, it's going to have benefits as well. 
Yeah, because um, look, like obviously if someone needs to get active or get fit and healthy, a good step is going out for a run and, and you know, those yeah, sorts yeah. of things of being more active. So it's always in context of, of how the person is going to stay. But there's a lot of these like um, couch to 5K and stuff like that, which is good because you're getting people out of yeah, there. Yeah. The thing. There's a lot of during lockdown, hit workouts, people jumping around and doing all this, you know, whatever they may be doing. It's good. It's getting them active and fit. We encourage it. Anything yeah, yeah. to do with active and fit. But why do you think in mainstream media as well, a lot to do with health and fitness is push that you need to do cardio to be, you know, to be fit and healthy. Resistance training isn't, like I think in recent years, it has been included a lot more. Yeah. Because just to give you an idea, um, there was actually a study um, completed, um, and we can go into a lot more, which actually showed it compared um, resistance training to um, aerobic, you know, cardiovascular mm -hmm. training. And it did actually find, obviously it was a, it was a long study completed with more than I think um, 10,000 applicants they could pick between um, cardio or resistance yeah, yeah, yeah. training and they train around I think the same time two, three, three, three times a week so it was, it was quite similar and obviously there's over a prolonged period of time and it did show that um, well just looking at here it showed that um, resistance training uh, found, was found to um, show uh, greater levels um, of range of motion as an injury prevention tool to support that, you know, uh, for fat loss, hormone balance, and also just support with mental health. So um, I think what I want to basically say is like, oh, this is resistance training can help people a lot more. There's people that are not exposing themselves to that. They might be, you know, for various reasons scared. So what can we do to support people to, you know, like get out there, do, you know, try out, get into the weights room, do resistance training. I think we need to start like just championing normal people that train and do resistance training because I feel like the people that are maybe pushing the agenda of resistance training, for example, it mm. might intimidate people because yeah. it's like bodybuilders, for example. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. Because mainstream media is a lot of the time, it's like, that's if you do resistance training, you're, you, yeah. oh, it's only for bodybuilding. It's and, not really been shown as a Yeah, and how benefit. many women have you spoken to that, um, for example, our clients that when they sign up with us, they say they don't want to lift weights because they're going to get too hench. Yeah. For example. They get too big. I hear it all so the time. So I feel like we need to normalize lifting weights for everyone, regardless of who you are. And in the moment, it's not just Arnold who's the poster boy. Yeah. For example, for weights, you'll start to see um, the average Joe, for example, lifting weights exactly. as a first port of call because I feel like they find it easier to go for a run. Yeah. It's rather true. than going to an inti intimidating weights room where you But to see people. the results, you need to push yourself. You need to get out of your comfort zone. Everyone always says it. So yeah, but it's, it's easier. Yeah, it's to, easier. Yeah. It's easier said than done. So I feel like. Sorry. So just yeah. to go back to that, that study actually showed that resistance training was connected to a better outcome to fat loss and health. And it was found to be superior to fat loss uh, for fat loss as well. And also improved yeah to health so a lot of people just connect that with just cardio and, and yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. So, i've had it like i said clients like female clients especially mm -hmm. i really really were trying to give like the best advice out here and, and you know support people a lot of them when you say okay this is what we need to do it's going to include resistance training they're like i don't want to get too muscular and yeah, i want to get big yeah, yeah. and that's not going to be possible that again can you just explain a bit more about how like muscle, how long it takes to actually develop muscle and then how consistent you have to be with your training. And plus being in a calorie um, surplus yeah, like yeah, as well, yeah. all of these things, it's not easy. You're not just going to lift up some weights and then- And boom, like- You're going to be boom. It's yeah. very unlikely. So it takes very, very years to build muscle, mature muscle at that. And then your diet has to be geared towards that. Then in, in particular in females as well, unless you have- a really high testosterone boost, you're not going to start developing a male's body and male's physique. Yeah. Your hormones just are not geared to that. So yeah. I wouldn't really worry about that. And we love it because I remember when people have asked us and we, we've done things, the thing that we're most positive and we look forward to and we enjoy seeing the most in the fitness industry right now is women lifting weights and women yeah. getting stronger and improving themselves. And it's so important. I know you push that so much to your mum. Yeah, I do as well. Absolutely. It's so important is, you know, with good technique as well, focusing on improving the technique and, and getting in there. And Yeah, and you'll surprise yourself because, yeah, women, you can be strong without being hench. Yeah. So I feel like, don't worry about getting hench. Like, yeah, just yeah. lift the weights and you'll be fine. I mean, most of, a lot of our clients, um, you know, the female ones, they're absolutely just smashing it. They're killing it. Yeah, nine you nine see ten most of, of our are... testimonials. Yeah, they're yeah. just killing it. They're just absolute superheroes, honestly. So and nine out of ten of them are lifting weights. So yeah. and none of them 
would consider themselves hench. So, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. true, it's true. That's it. But yeah, just to wrap off with, bro, um, last bit, let's just talk about the future now. Mm. We've spoken about past, we've spoken about the present, we've given support and advice. And let's wrap up now. What is the future for Fit Credibles um, for Eunice and Ezra? Where's this journey going Literally, next? Literally been saying it for years, keep saying it. It's just world domination, to be fair. That's it. Um, yeah, we just want to be in the front of as many people, spreading good energy, good knowledge, and good information mm. so that we can help as many people to make the correct decisions. It's going to start off with the ones and twos, the hundreds, thousands, and hopefully the millions and the billions in the world. So it will come, it will come. That's it. Nice and simple. I think we have no fear in putting ourselves out there now mm. to give the right message and the right idea. Um, we're driven, we're passionate about it, and we're going to keep pursuing it and pushing forwards with it until we get our message out there because we know yeah. um, it's missing, it's missing, it's missing out there. People need to understand the value of your health, your and health and your fitness in general. Like we always say, quote, be fit, be incredible. And also we see everyone as a superhero. We're all us, we're all our own individual superheroes. We just need to just believe that and we just need to implement it and we just need to unleash it basically. Yeah. It's in there. We just need to get it out. Everybody everybody has got the opportunity to do it. And we've been able to see how many lives we've changed. I know it sounds cliche, but how many lives we've changed, how many people have been more happier. Yeah. Have been more, you know, um, their mindset, especially during lockdown. How many of our clients were their mindset? How strong we've built. We've built athletes. We've built our athletes, and we'll do that for everyone else. I want to do that for the, like you said, for the millions and the billions for sure. All right, cool guys. That was the Fit Credibles podcast. That is it there. Um, we're going to be back with more episodes. Um, please subscribe, like, like um, yeah, subscribe, like, share, um, tell a friend, tell a friend of a friend. Yeah, please just spread this out. We love all the support. We appreciate it all. And we're going to just continue to grow. Are we good? Yeah. Perfect. That's a wrap, man. That's good.